Water is a human right. Uh, it's necessary for life. Most of Earth's fresh water is locked up in polar ice caps or is buried in underground aquifers. Less than 1% is accessible in lakes, rivers, and streams. And in more and more places, it's becoming increasingly scarce and valuable. The Great Lakes region is the ultimate exception, a freak of nature with a seemingly inexhaustible and invulnerable freshwater supply. Residents of this apartment building say they've been without running water for four days now. I don't really know what's going on. Tianka Thompson lives in a one-bedroom apartment with one-year-old Joshua. Her water jugs are filled courtesy of the neighbor's outdoor faucet. Not an ideal situation for sure. No, I've been trying my best to make it through. I would also like to share statistics with you in regards to shaping the water crisis. 40% to 40 of Detroiters live in poverty. The per capita income in the city of Detroit is under $20,000. Water department shutoff policy is uncompromising and it does not include homes that include uh, families with infant children, elders, and others that have been shut off. We are an 83% African American city that is being disenfranchised by this water situation. The assistance programs such as WAVE and THAW and other organizations are not at capacity to handle 90,000 to 120,000 citizens in the city of Detroit that are in dire need. Governor Snyder is the first sitting U.S. governor in the history of the United States of America to get a sitting citation from the United Nations he broke the United States Treaty, which we signed with all the world in July of 2002, that declares water is a basic human right. UN officials have issued a statement in a Detroit standoff. They say that water shutoffs at Detroit homes due to overbill, overdue bills violates international human rights. The average yes. monthly water bill in Detroit is now $75. Compare that to the national average, which is only $40. I mean, how That's do right. people pay these increases? The method of water you department can't. is using uh, is only hurting people's chances. The report says that as a cost-cutting measure, the water department stopped sending bills. It then installed smart meters that read retroactively so many families are hit with bills for thousands of dollars and many of those bills were from former tenants including water bills from nearby abandoned housing. How do you deal with the fact that the customers, as Kevin calls them, feel disenfranchised? I mean that you uh, made a unilateral decision. Uh, their elected officials have really been uh, the power has been taken away and it undermines people's right to vote because the only one that voted for Kevin was you. And it's, mm. this is something that is very disturbing that you have governors uh, undermine the, the will of the voters. There was a referendum last year that was opposed to this kind of action. You did it anyway. We are a country of laws, not of myth. The concept of receiverships, conservatorships, trusteeships is as old as the English common law since the king began granting tariffs and commissions. So this is unusual, but it is within the bounds of the law. And the timeline we're working under is basically an 18-month timeline, which would be October or so of next year. So this will be a very clear issue by no next November, and I'm happy with that because I should be held accountable and we're going to show results. A power outage on one of the hottest days of the summer. Hi, I'm standing in front of two homes. 
that have wasted our most precious resource, water. They leaked water for months. Water that could have been used for low-income families, seniors, and the disabled. Paying high water bills, that's due to the smart meter. Now we find that through the smart meters, we may be charged for the water that these homes have leaked. I think it's unfair. I think that we should all have a second look at this smart meter. It doesn't seem so smart to me when you charge residents who have not used the water. Trouble over the water, trouble over the water. Trouble over the water, trouble over the water. This trouble over the water, trouble over the water. This trouble over the water, trouble over the water. Imagine. Imagine with me for a minute Imagine there's no way to be for the children and women Traveling miles for a shower Sun up to sun down Coming back with just a smile Cause the pumps are shut down Can't get a thing from what's under the ground No one taught you to dance for a thunderous cloud You pray strong for a rainstorm Maybe it stays long It feels good But something tastes wrong Can't figure out what's eating at you either Beg it for help or a sign A good dream of you Can't figure out what's eating at you either Beg it for help, a sign of Katrina Day. Trouble over the water, trouble over the water. Trouble over the water, trouble over the water. This trouble over the water, trouble over the water. Hi, my name is Amber Lanfair, and I am a certified nurse assistant. It's very important that our adults our children should learn how to wash their hands properly to stop the spread of germs. Trouble over the water, trouble over the water. Trouble over the water, trouble over the water. This trouble over the water, trouble over the water. This trouble over the water, trouble over the water. Imagine. Imagine with me for a minute Imagine there's no way to be for the children and women Traveling miles for a shower Sun up to sun down Coming back with just a smile And it is just appalling that in this day and age Poor people who cannot pay their bills Are having their water turned off And it's a lesson for us here in the global north That it's not just poor countries of the global south anymore You're going to see more and more of this As we privatize our public spaces as the price of these utilities go up and as people get poorer and poorer while some people get richer and richer, it, we're going to see this more Detroit in our future. It's the third worldization of the United States of America. Oh, Craig, we're talking about thousands of people and the number growing every day. Here's why. Because the water department is continuing to shut off water to those who have these huge outstanding bills. Again, to be very clear, we're talking about people who owe thousands of dollars, who've ignored the bill for months. Some of these people have a desperate need. They simply cannot afford to pay the bill. They need help from state agencies, like you mentioned, DHS. But there are other people, and this is where it gets controversial, who simply don't want to pay the water bill, who'd rather spend money on cable. And that's uh, where this whole debate, you know, comes together, is you've got people who can't afford to do it, yeah. others who are ignoring it, and at the end of the day, many believe it's a human rights issue. What's at stake for, for some of these folks if the city of Detroit does not do anything? How serious is a potential health hazard in, in this crisis? Before I answer that, let me say shame on Hank, shame on him. For, ex for for putting that lie and that mis and that disinformation what, what, out on the air. Murray, to suggest that Murray, people don't lie? want to pay for a water bill is scandalous. What is at stake here, Murray, young you man? you don't believe that there are people that don't want to pay the bill? I'm hang, answering hang on, I'll give you an the question. I'm answering the question. Ahead, what Murray. is at stake here is that there are tens of thousands of low-income families who cannot pay rising water bill costs. The cost of living is going up, the chances of living are going down, and we got these reporters out here like this guy that's just standing on the side of people that have money. Yes, there are bills that are being contested, but what we're talking about is two months being behind, $150 or more is what you owe, but the same kind of situation and the same kind of threat is not being made to these folks that are rich, golf courses. You know what, I, and, Marie, and, I'm and glad you brought that.
is it what not a dollar? Um, Maureen, this is an outrage what I hear here this morning. Maureen, I'm glad you did bring that part up because while residents have been shut off, Joe Louis Arena, where the Detroit Red Wings, where the hockey team yes. plays, they owe a little bit more than $82,000, I understand, in water bills. The Detroit Lions Stadium Ford Field owes more than $55,000. Yes. Golf courses, as you just mentioned, owned by the city of Detroit, owe more than $400,000. They're the, not being the, threatened with shut off. The state of Michigan, They're not being biggest told bill, that your uh, service is going $5 to be cut million off. Dollars for water at state fairgrounds, uh, as I understand it. Trouble over the water, trouble over the water. Trouble over the water, trouble over the water. This trouble over the water, trouble over the water. This trouble over the water, trouble over the water. Imagine. Imagine with me for a minute. Imagine there's no way to bay for the children and women. Traveling miles for a shower. Sun up to sun down. Coming back with just a smile because the pumps are shut down. Can't get a thing from what's under the ground. I'm gonna talk to you. We have been canvassing all morning, and what we have found as we go throughout the city is that families are getting their children taken away because Michigan law states that if there is not running water in a household, that it's unfit for children to reside there. These are really criminal actions that are taking place. They've been denounced by a United Nations commission as a violation of international law. And we asked Judge Rhodes to put an immediate moratorium on these water shutoffs. We asked the judge to take the $537 million that were stolen from the bond money for the water department to make repairs and went to four banks instead, the very banks that destroyed our city with all their predatory lending. Martin Luther King said we must rapidly begin to shift. <coughs> and that's where the shifting is coming from. In April the 4th, 1967, he was speaking about the Vietnam War. And he says that this rapid beginning of a shift, he made it an imperative, we must. He didn't say maybe possibly, maybe if you think about it, maybe if we get some analysis and some academics write some excellent policy papers, Maybe if some students show up McGill with some nice cafe latte and we had a, a nice panel discussion, then we might decide to do it. He said we must rapidly begin to shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society. When machines and computers and profit motives and property rights are considered more important than people, the giant triplets of racism, materialism, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. That's what we're confronting with, McGill. This triplets, we're all consumers. We have to return back to our humanity. And so how do we do it? What's the Just Transition campaign? Resistance, everyone repeat after me. Resistance. Resistance. Resilience. Resilience. Restoration. Restoration. And reimagining. Way in the water.